So first things first, I'm going to give you a little overview of all the settings inside the iStop Motion app. When you first open up iStop Motion, it's going to open up the last project that you worked on, and I have a few. But if, you, if it's the first time you're opening it, you're actually going to see this little welcome to Boink's iStop Motion. And it's um, kind of a fun little video about what you can do with the software. Just to give you a little overview of the workspace here, this area where you can browse your projects is called the gallery. And so if you wanted to share one of these projects, you were happy with it, you wanted to send it off to someone or to save it to work on it elsewhere, you would hit this button right here in the middle. Um, and it's sort of the standard icon where it's a block with an arrow coming out of it. So then that gives you a number of different sharing options. And you can also add a soundtrack to your video. So here's a nice time-lapse video I made of people eating pizza in the Idea Lab. Uh, you can also save it to your camera roll, you can mail a video clip, and you can also save it to a Dropbox or upload it to YouTube. If you'd like to make a new project, you're going to hit the icon directly to the left of that. It's sort of a white box with a plus sign in it. And then if you want to delete a clip, like this clip right here is just total rubbish, you hit the trash can right here, and then say delete I stop motion clip and then it's gone away. Up on the left hand side you're going to see that it also says theatre. The theatre is just a space where people share their uh, I stop motion projects that they really like. Up on the right hand side you'll see the letter I in a white circle. That's actually a settings area you can look at, so first of all it tells you about the software, but you can also choose things with the user interface. So, for example, you can switch off the sounds when you actually take the photos, it makes a kind of sound you can also choose the sources, whether you want the resolution to be 720p or 1080p. And you can also decide what your format is. So iStop Motion basically is a camera, so it's just capturing lots and lots of JPEGs and putting them together in something that resembles a timeline. So you can pick whether you want JPEG or PNG. And this is also where you could link to a Dropbox account. Let's go ahead and make a new project so you can see some of the settings in there. So when you first open it up, what you're going to see is this timeline area, and then this is your camera view. This is what you're going to be shooting towards. If you just tap on any area on the main part here, you're going to see this top bar. So you've got your back button to get you back to the gallery area, but you also have a little camera icon. The camera icon lets you set which camera you're using. So, for example, the iPad 2 has two cameras, so you can choose between the back camera and the front camera. And you can also change the settings. So if you hit settings, you can choose exposure or white balance. The iPad camera doesn't actually allow you to focus, it doesn't have that ability. So if you want to do something with the exposure, you can drag this little sort of iris here to an area where you want to monitor the exposure and you can see that that changed it slightly. Um, it's not terribly powerful, so really your best friend is just setting up the best lights that you can. You can also do the white balance too, so then hit done when you're happy with the camera settings. And then next along from the camera you're going to see this little icon that looks like a clock. And this is where you can set how you film. So the two modes that we have are single and time lapse. Single is going to be each of the frames that gets captured. You actually define, so you have to press a button for each one. And then there's time lapse, which allows you to say, okay, every 30 seconds I want to capture a change. So where you might like to use sim single is when you are doing like claymation. And where you might want to use time lapse is if you were trying to draw something quickly or kind of capture something happening over time and then make it into an animation. With time lapse, it's nice because you do have a lot of control over just how long the camera's going to wait between captures. And so if you were, say, drawing a, a continuous line or something like that, you could draw a part and then it would take a picture automatically, draw another part, take a picture. So I'll show you that in practice a little bit later. So now I'm going to stick with the single mode. And one final thing over on the top bar here is we've got a question mark. So if you're stuck on stuff and you need a little bit of help, 
you can hit that and it actually brings up these little post-its that explain what everything does. I'm gonna just record a couple things here, so... You can see why, why you might want to switch those sounds off in those settings I talked about before. So when you have some frames in your timeline, this spanner icon becomes available. So you can actually duplicate frames, you can delete one frame, and you can delete all frames. So that's totally up to you. Okay, and you can see, <laughs> you can see that little ghostly shape of my head there. So what's really nice about this software is it does do the ghosting. And so you can go, And then if I go over to my playback over here on the left, you can see my head moving along. If you need to change the playback settings, you can go to this cog on the left hand side and you can decide how you want to show your clip. So do you want to show just the individual clip? Do you want to show the ghosting or do you just want to show the camera view? And then you can also choose on the speed, the frames per second. You can decide to switch grid lines on and off. And you can also decide to play at half speed. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So that's a brief overview of our functionality within the software. And then I'm going to show you a couple of in practice examples. Here we are in my studio, which is where I like to play with lots of cool stuff. And I am just adding some atmospheric lighting here to um, one of Kevin Chapman's figurines which I stole for the weekend to make this tutorial and I am using my iPhone to add a little bit of silhouette lighting with the flashlight app. I'm making a new project and I'm gonna hit the single button every single time I want to do a new frame so we'll see how it goes. Obviously this is a good example of why it's really important to kind of fix your figurine down. And let's do something with his head and his arm. Ah, oh, how robot chicken. See how that plays back. Nifty! <laughs> okay, so here we are again, and uh, this time you can see it's a little bit of a precarious setup, and I'm once again using Grey's Anatomy. Um, I also have this kind of fun drawing implement that I made once. It's a guitar pick with a pencil stuck to the end of it, which I think is really helpful for doing a very quick sort of drawing like this. So I just want to explain what that was in case you were wondering. And uh, so I'm going to do a little drawing on my sketch pad, but this time I'm using a time lapse setting. So every 30 seconds it's going to take another picture. And so I just want to start drawing and make sure I get my hand out of the way before it does the next shot. So let's see how that goes. enough of that you get the idea but I just wanted to kind of see what would happen if I started sketching like that so let's play it so you could do a lot more and I think keeping a piece of paper really fixed down so maybe with some artist tape on a board and uh, find a better setup with your camera, but in terms of sketching out something really super quickly just to get a feel for how you're going to animate something, this could work really well. 